Hi, this is Hallie Caster Jane, and I am One Broad Talking. One Broad Talking is supported by the following. I am Hallie Caster Jane, and I am proclaiming my declaration of independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people are created equal, that they are endowed with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and the blood sport of politics. Let's talk. How are y'all? Happy? Sad? Seething? What? Tell us. Tell me. Are you as crazed by this whole damn election season as I am? Are you going through withdrawal? Are you wishing you were back where you could fix things before they got so out of hand? I'm here to talk about this election. Oh my gosh. Donald Trump is our new president. Okay, president-elect. Mm, how did that happen? I think I need a drink. Anybody got anything they want to hand me? Come on, guys. Mm, bring me that Midori. Bring me that vodka. I think I need it. Oh my God. Let's get going. I have got a lot to talk about today. Here's where we are. Let's start. Okay, so the American people have spoken. Hillary Clinton is not going to be the next president of the United States. And Donald Trump is. Change election? Do we know why he won? Do we know why she lost? A lot of pundits out there trying to figure it out. Personally, I think it's way too soon to really get a handle on what the heck went on wrong for Hillary, or went right for Donald Trump. But Mr. Trump, what an interesting character he is. And I do say character because I think that the person who was elected was a character. I don't think who we are seeing is the real Donald Trump. I think that person's going to be revealed to us later rather than sooner. We are an interesting country. We are very divided, aren't we? And we've been very divided for a long time. I'm not sure I understand the divisions. I'm not sure I understand whether it's the what. Um, is it? Is it economics? Is it where you're born? Is it how you're raised? Is it all those politicians on both sides of the aisle ginning up all of our differences? And both sides do it, even though one side might say they don't. They do. We're polarized. A word I have absolutely unequivocally come to hate. Hmm. We shouldn't be. Aren't we all Americans? I hope that when everything settles down and we get this new neo politician, not non politician, he's proven himself to be a politician, neo politician, you know, the star politician. The, the celebrity politician. Yep, that's where we are. We are now in the world of celebrity politicians. By the way, Trump wasn't the first. Hmm, been around long enough like I have. Let's go back to Kennedy. He was our really first star politician. Okay, maybe you could even say Ike way before my time. But after all, he was a hero of World War II. But Trump, we're talking about Trump now. And Trump is a celebrity politician. He is the new celebrity president, and we don't know him. He was never properly vetted during the uh, campaign. We know that. The press didn't do its job. I railed against the press through this whole cycle. Some are angry at me for doing so. Some now are willing to say, yeah, we messed up. But back, I keep wanting to, I keep going off into a thousand directions when really what we need to do here is talk about Mr. Trump. And the fact that we really don't know who he is. Is he a Republican? That's the question. Will he lean to the left, lean to the right, stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight? I don't mean to be glib. I really, really don't. But we really don't know who this guy is. He seems to be a little of it all, though, doesn't he? And that's going to be very interesting. Because the President of the United States, current Mr. Obama, has said that Trump is not an ideologue. Maybe that's good. Maybe that's not so good. Again, it's all up in the air. We don't 
know. But we do know this. Donald Trump is the newly president-elect of the United States. And I think we all owe him a chance. We do. I think everybody who is ginned up on the right and ginned up on the left ought to calm their little butts down. They need to get off of the corners where they are so rooted, and they need to just chill and give the guy a chance. Now, in the few days that he's been in, you know, power, mini power, pre, pre-presidential pre power, I think he's made a few mistakes already. Well, that's to be expected. We're going to talk about some of those in a few minutes. But I want to start with this show, this one broad talking, saying to you, we have got to give this president a chance. We'll take it from there. And we'll see what he comes out to be. Hopefully, he won't destroy us in the process. So I see people complaining about diversity being forced on them. And I, and I, and I feel for them. I even, maybe even I can be sensitive enough to understand it. Particularly, you know, those white people who lost their jobs. Anything that looks different than they are could be a cause of the reason they lost their jobs besides trade agreements and, you know, offshore companies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it breaks your heart that people are so insensitive to what the black and the brown, you know, women, gays, what their, what their life is worth. Are we lacking empathy in this country? Could at the core of everything that's going on here now be a complete, the end of empathy? I think without empathy, aren't you considered crazy? <laughs> I mean, I think the difference between psychopaths and the regular folks is, is empathy. Okay, let's talk about apathy, because I think apathy is a very interesting dynamic to add to the discussion of what the hell is going on in this country. You see, I think apathy is an excuse. I don't think it's real. I don't think people don't give a hoot. I think people just just don't want to deal with it anymore. That's different than apathy. That, 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 that's, that's about anger. That's about feeling um, disenfranchised. That's about not being part of the, pl- of the system. Uh, you know, no, I'm not going to vote. I don't give a hoot. I don't, I don't think people say I'm not going to vote. I don't give a hoot. I'm not going to vote because it's not going to make any difference. So that's not apathy. That's disgust. That's cynicism. That's a whole lot of other things. Let's throw the word apathy out of there because I just don't think it exists. But also behind it is lacking in this country on a lot of levels is a sense of responsibility. I've always said that voting, and I wrote about this, I think, on, you know, I, can't, I write so many things. I don't know if it was Facebook. I don't know if it was on my column, whatever. But, you know, people have a lack of sense of responsibility in this country today. They don't realize that the system doesn't work unless you have a sense of responsibility, that you, that, that voting isn't just your right or your, your privilege. It's also a sense of responsibility. And I think so many Americans run away from responsibility anyway, not because they're bad people all the time, but because I think that, that life is just so gosh darn hard these days that people can't help themselves. You know, that's what they want to do. They, well, I don't want to deal with this anymore, so I'm just going to go take to my bed. I, I just think people are overwhelmed. It takes me to the word overwhelmed. You know, a lot of words could throw around in this conversation, and, 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 and I think they're important words, and I think that they're words that nobody thinks about anymore or understands anymore that are are fueling who we are. Let's talk civics. When I was a kid growing up, I can remember sitting in my third grade class. I think it was Mrs. Carlson. Or was it Mrs. Poindexter? It was Mrs. Poindexter. I always hated that name. Whenever I hear the name Poindexter because I hated school. But but going back to that, we, we learned civics. That was that was that was part of the curriculum, you know. It, it, it was you know math and English and reading and science and civics. But we don't learn civics anymore. They don't teach kids civics. They don't they they don't learn the Constitution. They should be learning the Constitution before they learn anything else. Just like you know, it really annoys me that we don't pledge allegiance to the flag anymore. You know, because of all of the isms. You know, you, you better not do this because you might insult this person who's of this ism. 
we, we learned all of this. We learned civics. We learned the Constitution early on. We pledged allegiance to the flag. I think that's great. What's wrong with nationalism? You know, it is who we are. And, you know, be proud of this, be proud of that. How about starting off with, I'm proud to be an American. Oh, my God, I'm beginning to sound right, like a right winger. God help us. But but I believe that. And I believe that that is a problem of what's going on in this country. You know, I lived a long time in the rural area of America. And I understand these people because they were my neighbors. They were my friends. They are my friends. They have a very different picture of America than than, than, than the east, west coast, you know, um, the edges of America have. They really still do believe in an America. They still fly their flags outside their homes. They still celebrate, you know, national holidays, not for the commercial aspect of it, but because they really believe. They are also the people, by the way, who serve America more than other folks because it's a way out of rural America when there is no other way out because there are no jobs there anymore. You know, I think civics, I think nationalism, I think pledging allegiance to the flag. Great stuff. We now have politicians who do not do that. They pledge allegiance to the party before the United States of America. Never more prominent and more, you know, something for us to understand and to, to learn is really happening than what you saw in this election. I mean, these guys from the Republican Party who morally did not agree, ethically did not agree with Donald Trump sold themselves out because he was the person who was representing the party, whether they liked him, <clears throat> excuse me, or they didn't. What the hell does that say about our leaders? That infuriates me. Nothing makes me madder than that. That drives me insane. We have to get back away from that. The, 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 the party system is, they're unions now, they're not parties. I belong to this union. I belong to that union. How will this union serve me? How will that party serve me? Ideology? I don't know about ideology. You know, they keep saying that the, the, the Republicans are the party of, you know, small government, yada, 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 yada. The Democrats are the party of this, that. Then when the guys get into lead, and I say guys because, God darn it, we haven't had a woman get into lead. So when the guys get into lead... And they start seeing all the intelligence and they learn what's really going on behind the scenes. They lead the same way. At the end of the day, they always say presidents are always friends at the end because they are the people who are in the job and they know what it is and they share that brotherhood together. No. At the end of the day, they wind up ruling the same way because they understand the reality of what's really behind the scene. So... Parties. I think parties get away. In, uh, parties are getting in the way of how America is. This drain the swamp thing. Can I go there too? I want to go on drain the swamp. What a crock of crap. So Donald Trump, true, never served a day in his life. Never been a politician. That's pretty wonderful and terrific, isn't it? Wonderful and terrific. Except for one thing. Every single person so far he's brought into this administration who are behind him are guess what? party insiders, whether they're from the Tea Party aspect of it or they're from the other party aspect of it. They are still party insiders. They are still political people. Kellyanne Conway, been a pollster all her adult life. She's not an outsider. I understand, and we'll have to look into this further, but everybody who is put on all the committees and whatever, they all turn out to be insider lobbyists. You know, those are the names that will never be put out there to his constituents because, you know, he doesn't want them to know the truth. But just think of it. Newt Gingrich. Have we heard of Newt Gingrich before? How long has he served? How long did he serve? Rudy Giuliani? These are not draining the swamp. These are the swamp. They're just the other side of the swamp. There's the east side of the west side of the swamp. There's the Republican swamp and the Democrat swamp. We're right back where we started from with a leader who nobody quite knows who the hell he is. You know, okay, big deal. But he's given his presidency already, and he's not even sworn in, back to the swampsters. What a crock a hoo ha hoo ha Are Americans paying attention, really? That's something else we need to discuss, because I don't think Americans are paying attention. I think that what Americans are doing is whatever soundbite, you know, gets into their little capillaries and their little brain and, and their synapses and goes across it enough times. That's what they believe. 
but they're not paying attention. They're buying into. The system is so rigged against people today. God bless them. They got to go out. They got to work. Sometimes two jobs, sometimes three. They got families. They got families from 15 different marriages, children all over kingdom come, yada, yada, yada. Unless you're like the super rich life stinks right now for Americans. It's too much to do in too few hours and too many jobs and yada, 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 yada. That bakes in something really important. And that is nobody's got time to really, truly delve into the issues really look at it be more than knee jerk on it but really 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 study and understand the reality of what's going on personally i don't think either party is better than the other party they're just different sides of the same coin you are listening to one broad talking politics with hallie kasser jane i'll be back in a minute Stay with me. And I am back. And you are listening to One Broad Talking Politics with Hallie Kesser Jane. Thanks for tuning in. This shouldn't be such a surprise, by the way, that that, that Trump won this election. I don't think in the history of America there are very many times that a party that's been in office for two terms has not transferred its power to the other party after that. People do want change every eight years. They knew that going in. They thought Hillary was going to be a little bit different. You know, she was the great Hillary Clinton and she was going to break the cycle. I don't know that that's true. I don't think she ever had that much of a chance just because of where she was coming in. And I think that analysis of what went, what went wrong. Does anybody really know other than, hmm, I think it was this. Hmm, no, it was that. Ah, you, did you see this statistic? Did you see this article? Did, nobody knows. You can't know yet. You don't have the data yet. It hasn't had time to percolate, you know, and, and, and whatever. It just is what it is right now. You can, this is all a guess. Time is going to tell us what really went wrong for the Hillary Clinton campaign. So why is everybody trying to analyze right now? Well, why? Because that's what they do for a living. That's what I do for a living. I analyze. We're all analyzers. The, all of America today, by the way, citizen journalists and opinionators. Let's talk women. Women in voting. Men vote for men. Blacks vote for blacks. Hispanics vote for Hispanics. Jews vote for Jews. Women don't vote for other women. We've got to think about this. What is this about? Is this not the most self-defeating behavior in the world? There's been an argument through this whole campaign about whether women should have just unilaterally voted for Hillary. That's an interesting thing to think about, isn't it? Should a woman elect another woman? Whether they think she is on the same side of politics as she is or whether whatever. I think there is a component to the argument that women should vote for other women that's different than an argument whether you should vote for a black or Hispanic. And that argument is this, estrogen. (laughs) Yeah, estrogen. The world has been ruled by men for so long. And if you look at the world, sure, there are a lot of good things in it. Yeah, the glass half empty, the glass half full. But by and large, right now, things aren't looking so terrific. And men are making those decisions. And they're making it with testosterone. What would have happened if we had had a woman ruling the world? I personally think it would have made a heck of a lot of a difference in the way the world is. Now, of course, other people say, well, you know, we've got a couple of women running the show in other countries. Germany is not America. America is the leader of the free world. And I actually do believe it would have made a wonderful difference just to bring a woman's sensibilities into the White House, and out to the world. So when everybody started shaming women about saying they were pro-Hillary before they would vote for anybody else just because she was a woman, I know Gloria Steinem certainly took it on the chin. I didn't agree with that logic, and I think that women made a huge mistake by doing that. It definitely cost Hillary the presidency. How many white women actually voted for Trump? It boggles the mind. It boggles the mind. 
So I think there is a discussion here on why women are their own worst enemies. And there's another discussion. Had a woman gotten to the White House, broken the glass ceiling, whether she could have made a difference just because of a woman's sensibilities. I don't know. Maybe it's just me wishing that it were different. No, this is not anything about Hillary, because I refuse to discuss Hillary Clinton right now for a lot of reasons. I think I, like everybody else, need to calm my little butt down and let things kind of like just float away, not be a knee-jerk reactor to her loss. But I say this in all honesty. I do believe that women, thankfully, are different than men, and that women need to get to the seat of American power and world power if this world is truly going to right its ship. Comments appreciated. We'll give you where to reach me at the end of the show. Okay, so now Mr. Trump has told us who is going to be his chief of staff, as well as who is going to be his uh, chief strategist. Chief of staff, RNC chair, Rance Priebus, or Reince Priebus. I don't know. I can't pronounce the guy's name. What does that mean? Oh, my God. That being said, Steve Bannon, head of Breitbart News, a really controversial guy. There's a reason why the ADL and other groups have vehemently come out against Trump on this move, what I call a middle finger move to the left. What is Trump thinking? Ever since Bannon and Kellyanne Conway joined his team, got him elected, I say, because he didn't have a chance before they got there. Ah, the tropes, the anti-Semitic tropes and the tropes against blacks and browns and gays had become a very, very important part of Trump's campaign. Now he's president-elect. I've got some questions for our current president-elect, soon-to-be leader of the free world. And here's, here's what they are. There are a lot of people on Facebook you know, who are defending Trump saying, ah, you know, all that stuff that he said about the Jews and the blacks and the Browns and the Mexicans. Oh, you know, that was just Trump being Trump. You know, the guy's got a crazy sense of humor and he's got a way of doing things that's different than everybody else. And we really shouldn't take any of that to heart because really it's, it's not what he really feels. This guy is a wonderful man. He loves Jews. His daughter is a Jew now and his son-in-law is a Jew. And we don't know what this guy stands for. He's the most unvetted president-elect ever. We do know that there were problems with him refusing to rent to uh, the black folks in New York. That was real. That's on paper. So we don't know who this dude is. We don't know even remotely who he is. That's a very, very scary thing. Back to Facebook. I posted a question, you know. Is this okay with you guys on the right? that he's appointed this Steve Bannon to sit at the side of the president in a co-equal, by the way, support team with Reince. That chief of staff is generally its own um, position. But no, no, no. He's made very clear, the uh, president-elect, that this guy Bannon's going to be equal in getting the president's ear, as is Reince Priebus. I got answers when I asked that question, is this okay? Most of the answers said, well, you know, Obama's not a friend of Israel, and, you know, this one's not a friend of Israel on the left, and this one is a... Here's my answer to all of that. It's okay to be an anti-Semite on the right because far more are anti-Semites on the left? Does the right standing with Israel have something to do with they support the Jewish state and Judaism? Or is that the Republican base, the Christian right, actually supports the rapture? Does Obama's legendary hatred of Israel make Trump's dog whistling acceptable and Bannon's running of this headline in Breitbart News, Bill Kristol, Republican spoiler, renegade Jew, acceptable? Does tossing out anti-Semitic tropes and the same of blacks and browns, gays and Muslims by Trump become acceptable because Hillary did not and does not support Israel? Of course, that's not true, but that's what a lot of the Republicans are saying these days. That whom Abedin, 
the stuff going around the web from my right-wing friends. Huma is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. Can you show me a piece of paper to prove this? And even if it is true, even if her estranged husband is a self-hating Jew, as some allege, does that give cause to Trump to join forces with white supremacists and bring them to the seat of American power? By the way, we keep calling Breitbart guys the alt-right. Let's call them what they really are. They are white supremacists. That's who they are. KKK. Same. No difference. Even no matter what the name you refer to them as. Back to what I wanted to say. Even if it's true that Huma Abedin and her strained husband is a self-hating Jew, does that give cause to Trump to join forces with white supremacists and bring them to the seat of American power. It is true that anti-Semitism isn't a right problem. I railed against Obama, don't like his Israeli policies, don't like the way he played it with the American Jews, with the Israeli Jews, with Jews in general. Fact, that being said, and the fact that anti-Semitism isn't a right problem doesn't make it right by either side. It is also true that openly, boldly, arrogantly, perhaps as a militant, the president-elect did give the leader of the alt-right white supremacist, Steve Bannon, a seat in power. Another one coming out of the right at the moment is on the possible appointment of Mr. Ellison, Congressman Ellison, the first Muslim in Congress to be appointed to the head of the DNC. As to Mr. Ellison, all of you who say he is a quote-unquote devout Muslim, well, I personally don't think that that's a particularly good choice for the head of the DNC because it would be similar as to the appointment of Mr. Bannon into the Trump White House, the appointment of Ellison as the head of the DNC would be the same in your face, middle finger choice. But calling him a devout Muslim, as many of my right wing friends are doing right now, aren't they really saying, whispering, you know, he's really a terrorist at heart. All devout Muslims are terrorists at heart. I don't quite go there. I'm disappointed in my Republican friends. The better answer would have been when I asked on Facebook, you know, what's going on here? Not, this is what the left does. This is how they are. This is how Obama was. The better answer for all of us would be, should be, must be, that any appointment by a sitting president that in any way leaves open to question the firm commitment that the president or president-elect of the United States of America is firmly committed to every word of the Declaration of Independence is unacceptable. There is no room for misinterpretation on matters of religion, race, bigotry, of any kind, whether it is a Republican or a Democrat elected official. And there you have it. One broad talking. Have comments? Have questions for our next show? Ideas? Visit me on Facebook at Hallie Kesser Jane and on Twitter at The Hallie CJ Show. And be sure to visit HallieKesserJane.com and read my bi weekly fix of political snark inside the hopper. This is Hallie Kesser Jane, and I am one broad talking. Thanks for tuning in.